Hello and welcome into the Mixverse. My name is George, and if this is your first time here, I'm surprised because you should have been tuning into the Mixverse long before this moment. But if it is your first time, welcome. Welcome into the Mixverse. My name is George. Please hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't yet, especially those people who've been here before and have not subscribed. Let's do this. Come on. The Knicks are three and three. They just lost a difficult game to the Cleveland Cavaliers in Cleveland. We were up by nine points going into that fourth quarter and lost the game. Total collapse in the fourth quarter. And the collapse can be attributed to one thing specifically. Lack of defense on the perimeter. Look at that three-point percentage by the Cleveland Cavaliers. 46% overall. Now, they were shooting in the 60% range in that first quarter. So they cooled off. We knew they were going to. The New York Knicks once built a nine-point lead in this game, in that third quarter. And, man, it looked tenuous. But I'm going to blame the defensive scheme of this team. We allow too many wide open looks on the perimeter. And when you do that to an excellent three point shooting team, and I said this many, many times in the past, that that approach, that philosophy of defense, that defensive philosophy can work against almost 20 of the, like 66.7% of the teams in this league. 20% of the teams in this league, you can do that too. But you can't do it to the number one three-point shooting team in the league, especially with a Kevin Love out there. Kevin Love in the fourth score, in the fourth quarter. Here, let's go to this. Let's go, let's go to the stats. Oh, actually, I don't have his, his fourth quarter stats. But I have our, you know what? I'm going to go to the fourth quarter here. Kevin Love, mind you. Kevin Love outscored the Knicks by himself in the fourth quarter. He scored 16 points, shot 71.4%. Knicks only scored 15 points in that fourth quarter. And what did we see in that fourth quarter? We saw some Julius Randle attempts at some hero balling. Didn't work. RJ only took one uh, field goal attempt. He made his one bucket, but he comes in. Let's go back to this thing here. Comes in. Here, let's go here. We lost 121-108. He enters the game in the fourth quarter with 727 left for Cam Reddish. And that's fine. Because Cam uh, probably probably his worst game I've seen as a Nick tonight. That, uh, I, I, I mean, maybe I'm over-exaggerating, but not a good game for him. Knicks were up 99-95 when RJ comes enters the game because Cam had been making, look, he missed that two point. I mean, that was a ridiculous attempt that he made. He should have passed the ball out or pulled it back out. Again, shot selection, forcing the issue. Knicks were up 99-95 at that time. If we score, we go up at 101. We, I mean, nice, we got a nice six point cushion. Maybe we breathe a little bit, but if you can see, look up above that. Look at the 806 mark. Kevin Love makes a 25-foot three-point shot. That was a dagger. He was like I, like a good like three or four feet behind the arc. He just launched it, hit it. At that moment, you must realize what that means as a team and as a coach. This guy's got it. He's going to hit that those buckets. Donovan. He doesn't want to lose this game. He wants to make a statement that we made a mistake passing up on uh, or doing whatever we could to trade for him. So at that moment, what do you do? You should. Well, actually, I believe did Bernie Bickerstaff call that time out there. I can't remember when, when the time I was. Anyway, maybe you call a time out there and you pull everyone aside. and You're like, look, these guys are going to start launching. They're not getting anything in the paint, not getting anything in the paint. And let me and I'll prove this to you. Not getting in the paint. Look. We destroyed them in the paint. We doubled them in the paint. 64 to 32 in the paint. So what are they going to do? They're going to start launching for them to get those nice three-point shots. So what do you do? You adjust your defense. But no, not on a Tom Thibodeau team. No. 
Look what happened. RJ enters the game, immediately commits a foul on a three-point make by Donovan Mitchell. That's a four-point swing right there. Four-point swing. Tie game. By that point, game was over. Knicks, once Emmanuel quickly left the court, not soon after that, the Knicks only scored two more points for like a good four-minute stretch. I think. Anyway, they were they just couldn't they couldn't do anything on the offensive end, and in the defensive end, they were a total disaster. So it was a great team effort for the first three quarters, only to be fall apart in the fourth quarter. And that's what happens. This is the NBA. Great players step up when they need to. And that's what the Cavs did. That's what the Cavs, that's what Donovan Mitchell did. That's what uh, well, Mobley. Mobley had some big buckets. And that's what Kevin Love. Remember, wasn't he one of the all-time greats in the fifth the, like the 50 team? Yeah, he made the 50, the best 50 players. Wait, is that right? No. I'm going nuts. I can't remember. Anyway, the point is, he's a great. He's a. He's probably one of the best all-time big big men shooting. Uh, shooting big men in the history of the game, and we just leave him wide open on a, on a night when he's cooking. <sighs> Very difficult. Very difficult. I, I I I I'm appalled by this game, honestly, because it was right there. It was right there. Even though we struggled, we only shot 37% from the three-point line. So the fact that we were even anywhere close and we were shooting that poorly, well, that that's not atrocious, 37%, but not when a team, well, not when your opponent is shooting at, uh, they were shooting 46%. They put up 53 pointers connected on 23 of them. We only put up 20, we put up almost half the amount of three pointers that they did. Why? Why didn't we shoot more three pointers? Because we don't have guys that consistently can hit three point shot. Randall's three point shot, gone. MIA. That's a, that's a thing of the past. It's a thing of that all NBA season. It's a mirage. He's just not that guy. We'll never be that guy again. Ever. RJ actually had a very good three point shooting day. Did we get him give him get him more looks? No. Nah. No. Nah. Why? Why bother with that? Brunson struggle from the three point line. Go back. Let's go look at this thing here. Uh 0 for 3 for Brunson. 0 for 3 for Randall. Three point line. 48, 3 of 5. But 48, man, even though he did up the intensity defensively, gotta gotta shot that out. Gotta shut it out. He did up it. I could see him trying, but he's just limited. It doesn't matter how hard he tries, he's going to be a liability out on the floor defensively. Especially when the other team has it going. Has it cooking? You can't afford to have a guy out there on the floor who isn't playing defense the way we need it to be. So there you go. Mitch Robinson, disappointment today. 21 minutes, two of six, seven rebounds. He did get two assists, which is, I'm kind of shocked by that stat. Only four points. Look at that. No Knicks got scored 20 or more. No Knicks scored 20 or more. Yet the team scored 108 points. Hartenstein, six of 10. 12 points, could not hit a three-point shot. I thought he took more than one three-point shot, but I think he, he passed up on the three-point shot that I thought, and it caught, ended up costing us that possession because it, turned, it, it, it resulted in a turnover. I think the guy stepped out of bounds when he passed it to him. Can't pass up three-pointers when you're open, bro. You can't. Destroys the, the whole structure of, of, of the team. Uh, but he finished with 12 points, nine rebounds in 27 minutes. It was a nice little stat line for him. Uh, maybe foul trouble caused uh, issues for Mitch. Hard to say. Brunson got off to a slow start. Once again, was not having a good game, but he did uh, start cooking in that third quarter. In fact, let's go look at the stats of the third. We'll break the stats out by quarter. Uh, here, third quarter. Uh, Brunson, yes. Yes, six of eight for the third quarter. You can see he did most of his damage. Uh, 12, so he got 12 points in, in the third quarter. I think he ended up with 16 points total. So for the rest of the game, he scored four points, but gave us 12 in that uh, third quarter. Randall, uh, two of five in that third quarter, played almost the entire third quarter. Uh, Coming with five points. Uh, RJ, you know, one of two, uh, you know, almost 10 minutes, only got two shot attempts there. Okay, 
Uh, Fournier hit both of his uh, three-point shots in that third quarter, which explains why we were able to crawl back into it, according, and uh, along with uh, Quickly, who came in for the last two minutes and 25 seconds of that uh, third quarter, and he delivered with a, a nice three-point shot. Uh, and then the Knicks scored 34 points in that third quarter and follow up that awesome, beautiful third quarter with a 15-point effort in the fourth quarter. Now, again, we're on the road. You know, uh, second, you know, second game on the road after Milwaukee. All right. You know, kind of give them a little bit of slack. But that fourth quarter, it, it just, they looked like they didn't understand what they needed to do to actually win this game. When you're up by nine points, <laughs> all you should be thinking about is not letting the opponent score. And that's exactly the opposite of what we did. We allowed, in fact, I'm, actually, I should pull this up here. I'm going to pull this up while you guys are uh, doing this here. Ah, whatever. Uh, anyway, we got totally destroyed in that fourth quarter by the Cavs, which is depressing. Depressing, especially after that beautiful third quarter. I was, like, riding high, man. Uh, Obi Toppin. Let's discuss Obi Toppin here. Obi Toppin. Uh, right now is our best three-point shooter. <laughs> How do you like that? How do you like that? How, how bizarre is that? Oh, my God. Let me see here. Let me pull this thing up here. Oh, we, well, I'll get that later. I'll break, I'll break, I'll get into a deep dive. Really, at the end of the day, the takeaway from this game is we don't have a superstar. Obviously, we knew that, which is why we were trying to trade for Donovan Mitchell. And now the Cavs do. And remember, the Cavs were playing without Darius Garland. But also got a shout out to some of the good things that happened. Uh, Karis LeVert, that guy lit it up for 41 points on Friday. Couldn't do anything against the Knicks today. Shout out to RJ for his defense on him. So there were definitely some pluses. This is the kind of game where if I'm the head coach, I start looking at it in terms of maybe... I really got to start making the tougher decisions, which is who should be on the floor the majority of the time. When guys on your bench are generally outplaying the guys in your starting unit, then I think that should be a clear indicator that you should make adjustments. Evan Fournier should not start anymore for the New York Knicks. And even even without Grimes back and available, let's start Emmanuel quickly at the two. I mean, if you want to shift RJ to the two and start Cam at the three, so we got some more size, depending on the opponent, that's fine as well. But let's start looking at these different type of starting units and see what kind of flow they get us into this game instead of working from a defensive, not by defensive, but working from a de deficit trying to catch up constantly, we're working from an advantage. Hopefully, that's the idea. If you're not, then you're not. Then you shift. You do something else. Then at least you've gotten a look at these other players. You've seen, you've explored the other opportunities. You know, because, hey, this team's evolving. We have a trade deadline coming up sometime in or early in early 2023. Yeah, 2023. <laughs> Uh, so why not explore all options so we know what to do? Let's say, who should who should we trade? Who should we keep? What should we do? It's obvious to me that uh, as much as effort that Julius Randle has made to try and be more of a team player, and look, you got to shout out to him. The guy ended up with seven assists. So good for him, great for him. That great, seven assists, nine rebounds. But often when he's got that ball and he's driving into the lane, it just looks, I, I almost want to close my eyes, man. I almost just, just I just want to hear Mike Breen say, oh, Rando with the bucket. You know, like I can't even look. It just, it feels like, ah, it's just like, it's, it, it, you know, it's just, it's PTSD. It's PTSD from last season. That's for sure. That's for sure right there. Now, maybe I'm like totally exaggerating about all this stuff. Cavs are a good team. You know, we're three and three. Look. Guys, if we finish the year 500, we'll be happy. We'll be happy. So it's uh, the thing is, 
we want to win games like this as well because there's going to be nights when we drop a game because guys just don't have it tonight wasn't that kind of night tonight was a night about poor execution on the perimeter we saw moments we saw uh periods of time especially in that third quarter where we did have some really good perimeter def defense some some decent perimeter defense and we also got lucky there were some open looks that the Cavs missed uh there was one particular uh three-point attempt I think it was by Donovan Mitchell he got the ball OB was late to rotate over to, to cover him and the cool thing is that OB instead of like jumping up and possibly leaving his feet and having Donovan step around him or uh maybe OB goes too far and ends up fouling Donovan Obi came up to him and he just kind of like stuttered faked a jump and never jumped and then Donovan that threw Donovan off and he missed that three-point shot but in general the three-point perimeter defense in that fourth quarter killed us man just killed us I don't know why that happened oh well maybe that's that maybe this is telling I maybe I'm telling myself this should be the the end of this recap Dibs, you got work to do. You got work to do. Cam, you got a lot of work to do, bro. I don't know what's going on. You seem pissed and annoyed when you got taken out of the game. But why? That little spin move you made, it was this disaster. It was, it was just, it was horrific. Why were you forcing that shot? You forced at least three shots that I, that I saw. Um, RJ should have been more aggressive. More aggressive in that fourth quarter. It made stupid fouls, bro. If you're gonna foul someone, fucking foul them! Don't let him get the three-point shot off so he makes it. And, he, and then Donovan Mitchell got fouled twice, I believe, on a three-point shot. And connected both times, I believe. That's an eight-point swing right there. We had a nine-point lead, eight-point swing, boom, gone. And then it all gets in your head. You get all demoralized. Don't let it happen. Stay tough. Stay tough. Shout out to you for making your buckets, RJ. Finally, making some three-point shots, some big ones. Shouldn't have lost this game, guys. Shouldn't have lost it. We had it, but we did. Ah, uh, what a bummer. What a bummer. Let's see who we're playing next. Can't even remember. I'm so annoyed by this loss. Because it really looked like we were there. It really looked like this. Was, oh, yeah, this is the game. This is the finally the next game. You know, okay, we had a valiant effort against the Bucks, But now we're going to come in. We're going to win this game. Didn't happen. Now we're going to face at home the atlanta hawks november 2nd i want some blood not blood blood literally blood but i want us to totally clip the hawks and win that game all right thank you guys for watching this again subscribe if you haven't yet definitely subscribe hit the thumbs up button drop your comments I want to hear your feelings your thoughts about this game i'm sure i overlooked some things uh, I love that's what I love your comments. It totally helps remind me. This is our Knicks universe, uh, Knicks verse. So uh, your comments, your notes are all very, very, very much appreciated. And I will see you around the Knicks world.